highly highly um, Leo is one from AFP uh, just a quick question what is your feeling uh, with this loss uh, well obviously disappointed uh, you know, we started the game very uncharacteristically not like us you know we've been really sharp at the start of games we played with a fair bit of pace and precision and today we were sloppy you know whether that was the physicality of Fiji um, and then from that, uh, we, you know, we had times in the game where we got on the front foot, but we, we struggled to get on the front foot. And the full congratulations to Fiji. You know, they, they played really well and it's a, a deserved victory for them. And, and, you know, I'm really pleased for them as a team and we've got some work to do. You know, we've got Wales next week. Uh, you know, the great thing about the World Cup tournament, it's not the end of the road. Um, you know, we've got Wales next week, so we need to kick some stones tonight. Um, uh, work out where we can improve quickly um, and then get on with the game against Wales. Thank you. Uh, hi, Eddie. Barnaby Chessman from AFP. Um, coming into this game, Fiji had said that this was a do or die match for them. Is that going to be the case for you against Wales next week? Uh, probably so, mate. Yeah. If you do the figures, I think it will be. So. Um, yeah, I've got no doubt we'll get a response. I was really pleased with the, the character our young team showed. You know, in the, when Fiji's on the front foot um, in a fairly hostile environment, um, it would have been easy for, the, for our team to go away, but they didn't. You know, and I think if you look at the records, the, the stats show that that's the youngest uh, finishing group for Australia since 1995. Um, so amongst the gloom, there's some really pro promising thing there, from, particularly from the younger players. But uh, yeah, I don't know whether that answers your question. Um, Eddie, you've, you've spoken a lot about wanting people to believe in the Wallabies again. And there'll be a lot of people who will be very disappointed, Wallaby fans who have come, come in and seen that game. What, what's your message to them after that loss? Uh, we'll get ready for Wales. I don't, I don't catch the fans, mate. I appreciate all their support. Um, we're doing our absolute best, and I apologise. It's my fault. I take full responsibility for it. Eddie, 18 penalties. Um, was that a result of the, uh, the physicality battle that Fiji perhaps won? And, and how much of significance was the loss of Tupo and, and Skelton not being able to get that physical injection? Well, let, let's start off. We, we can't blame the loss on Tupo or Skelton's. Uh, not being there. We've got to be good enough to be able to cope with that. Um, and the penalties, um, when, you, when you're not on the front foot, it's, 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 it's quite easy to give away penalties. Um, so I'm not worried about our discipline, I'm worried about not getting on the front foot. You know, we, game of rugby, any game of rugby, you've got to get on the front foot. And if you can't get on the front foot, then you, you're battling it. Um, yeah, it was always going to be a tough day in terms of the, the officialing of the game. We knew that, uh, expected that, but we weren't good enough to cope with it. Um, Eddie, how do you think Carter played today? And um, can you talk through your thinking around some of those backline changes in the last 30 minutes? You know, we needed to get some momentum in the game. Um, I thought Fines did that, uh, Donaldson to 10 did that, Mark going to 15 did that. And Sully scored us a try that put us back into the game. Um, so, yeah, no, I thought they were they were positive changes that we made. Yeah, you know, Carter's a young ten. He's going to have those days, mate. Yeah, you know, I think I've said this before. He's going to have those days, but he'll bounce back. He's a good young player. You're the boss here, are you? That's good. Eddie, you talk about the character shown by the side. What other positives can you take from this game and sort of put into Wales, which is, as you said, sorry, it's going to be a do-or-die game? Yeah, just the fight we showed, mate. You know, I've, I've seen teams go away against when Fiji's like that, and we didn't. We stuck in there, hung in there. You know, we just couldn't get one part of our game really going. You know, if we were able to get our mall going, that could have changed the game, but we couldn't get that going. We didn't get any ascendancy in the scrum and we were beaten at the breakdown. So that was the difficult things about it. Sorry, we just wait for the translation sometimes. Me too. Um, I was just waiting for the translation. Thank you. Go ahead. 
Uh, sorry, Eddie. Sonny Bill uh, Williams was talking on Stan afterwards and he talked about how he felt for Carter to not be able to go back to the hotel and have someone like a Quaid or a Bernard Foley to talk him through. Uh, do you have like any regrets, I guess, on not having an experienced 10 here with you and who is there and what will they, uh, you know, be saying to Carter to help him through? Uh, well, when you're a television commentator, you're always right, mate. So maybe I need to become a television commentator. Then I'll, then I'll be right all the time. Um, look, we've gone with a, a young team. I've got no, no um, regrets at all. We're building a team for the future and we're going to go through some pain. And some of the young players are going to go through some pain. And that's generally how you, you have an apprenticeship. Um, he's got plenty of support. Eddie, we saw um, Will Skelton arrive in a moon boot. I mean, how serious is his injury? Is he any chance of playing against Wales and the same for Tupo? Uh, neither of those will be available for Wales. Do you see them p taking part in the tournament beyond uh, that? Yes. Oh, sorry, Dan. Both of them, yes, correct. Don't jump the queue, mate. The boss is not happy. <laughs> Dave, what was it like out there? Because it just seemed you, you couldn't get any foothold in the game and any time you started to build a little bit of momentum, Fiji just turned you over. Yeah, well, I think you've nailed it. Exactly that. Um, put them under pressure and let them off. Eddie, Gareth Griffiths, BBC Wales. What have you made of Wales and under Warren Gatland in this tournament and before since he's come back? Yeah, well, yeah, I think they've gone back to to a traditional style of Welsh play. You know, a lot of the play comes off bigger. Um, their their defence has improved, uh, and their lineouts improved. You know, they're, they're big changes in their, their game since Warren's taken charge. So, you know, they'll be a tough team to beat, mate. Eddie, did you see this performance coming at all? Was there anything in the week that that led you to think this might happen? Uh, well, it's, all, it's, it's always a possibility in the World Cup. You know, you've got to be on your game. Um, but I thought out, we, you know, and this sounds stupid, doesn't it? And it is stupid to say, so I won't say it. Dave, how do you, what do you say to the boys? Like, how do you, how do you regroup? I mean, it's, you know, Wales is only, is, you know, a week away or less than a week, a week? Anyway, but yeah, how, what do you, what have you got to say and how are you, how are you going to bounce back? Um, we just get ready for, get ready for Wales. You know, we've got to do every game for me, to be honest, everyone's talking about, we've got an upcoming do or die game. It's a World Cup game. So every game's do or die in my eyes and in the players' eyes. So we didn't get it right tonight, and we'll get it right next week. Yeah, Dave, just wanted to know, like, when did you find out you would be um, actually leading Australia and, I guess, just the contrasting emotions of, of that honour um, and then the disappointment with the result? Uh, gave, gave Will every chance to be right for the game, and, um, you know, we got a quality leadership group that we were chatting throughout the week, and we prepare for this, you know. We've... We've done the work in preparing for these types of uh, situations to come and obviously it's an honour for me to lead and we would have liked to have a, a win but um, back to the drawing board and we've got to get some things right and uh, we're excited for the challenge next week against Wales. Eddie, if uh, you realise that Will Skelton was a two-week injury a few days ago, what was the value, I guess, and the reason to withhold that and to...
made the decision to go for a young team. Um, if that's the wrong decision, then I'll be held uh, uh, accountable for that. But I think Australian rugby needs to move on to a younger team. And yeah, I'm, I'm prepared to experience some pain to go through it, to leave Australia with a team that's capable of doing really well at a World Cup. And it's not to say we can't do that. You know, we've had a, a bit of a setback today, um, but that's, that's all part of being in a World Cup. You know, I do remember South Africa lost the game and won the World Cup. So funny things have happened. Eddie, can we expect some personnel changes for Wales? Um, Andrew Callaway, is he an option to come into the side or at least onto the bench? Uh, well, I think that's a bit premature to be talking about selection now. We just finished the game. Um, so what should I say there? You tell me what I should say. Uh, well, I'm not thinking about anything apart from trying to work out why we didn't play well in the game at the moment. And then I'll work out how we're going to play against Wales. Last question, please. Oh, no, they can keep going. They can keep going. It's good. Yeah? Yeah. Um, with that missed penalty from Fiji right at the death, how important do you think that losing bonus point could be coming into a potential for three teams to end up on the same? Uh, yeah, well, it could be massively important, mate. So, you know, as disappointing as our, our performance was today, you know, to get a point out of that is a, is a bit of a bonus, and that's probably why they're called bonus points. And just on Wales, is there anything that you feel like Australia has got the upper hand and, and you know, Warren's an experienced operator, but what gives you confidence heading into next week about them? Oh, well, I'll worry about Wales once we get this out of the way, mate. Um, Eddie, how is Tate McDermott going through the week? Um, is, do, you, do you think he will be right for Wales? Yeah, no, he should be right, mate. Um, and just the, the number around the last time Australia lost to Fiji was 1954. Did you ever think that would happen? Um, and does that hurt personally? Uh, well, it definitely hurts, mate. It hurts personally, yeah, 100%. Um, uh, and as I said, I'm 100% responsible for it. You know, I've, I've gone down the line of picking a young team and I want this young team to be a good team. At the moment, we had a bad day today, which can happen. Um, and we've got to be better next week, so that's my responsibility. Uh, Eddie, just um, on Fiji's performances the last few weeks, um, do you think they're making a case for perhaps coming into that uh, Australia-New Zealand um, space within the uh, Pacific nations there? Uh, well, I can't. I'm not an administrator, that, mate, but all I can say is that they've got a quality team, they're well coached, um, and, you know, they're a team at the end of their cycle. You know, they've got a very experienced team, uh, guys probably close to their peak. Um, yeah, and we're at the beginning of our cycle. But I, I thought they played really well. And the, the good thing for, the, for Fiji now, you know, the, the development of the Drua in bringing those young players through, like the, the hooker who comes on in the second half, you know, he's a, he's a quality player. And he's become a quality player through training full time with the Drua, Drua, sorry, apologies, Drua, and also playing with the Drua at a higher level. And I think that's the real benefit for Fiji rugby. And if they can keep growing that, keep growing that system, there's no reason why they can't be in the rugby championship, mate. Oh, and you don't want to have a bit of a dig, mate? It's always good to kick a dead body, mate. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Get your fill. Yeah, you're comfortable with yeah, another question? Right. Yeah, sure. You're the boss, though. Yes, I am the boss. Just going to say, Eddie, with a young group like this, how do you sort of tell them, to, what do you say to them? Do you get them to sort of use this loss as motivation? Is this the type of game you park? How do you just approach a sort of week like this where it's going to be essentially knockout footy? Well, it's like any, any game. You know, you try to learn from the game. You try to work out what you've got to do next week. Um, accept that we didn't play well, try to work out why we didn't play well, um, but take the positives out of it and, and build for next week. Like young teams no different from an older team, except that a younger team has more variation in, in their performance. And that's what we're seeing at the moment. And it's not good variation. 
So we've got one week to fix it. Okay. Last one. Last question. Thank you. He's lucky last. Started and wants to start and finish. Yeah. Eddie, uh, we, we heard uh, the crowd uh, showed you. Did it hurt you or not? Uh, look, I'm a bit used to it, mate. And after that, I probably deserve more, mate. You know, they should be throwing, sh throwing what, what they throw here, baguettes, croissants at me. Uh, it's not good enough, so I deserve whatever I get, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you.